we, the church, in 2013, need to be the people who speak of the truth that God is coming again in Jesus and all things will be renewed. That's not going to work. So there we go, we're going to do the candles today. Do the match today. And this morning, we lit the fourth candle, which reminds us of Mary, the mother of Jesus, who had that vision from the angel Gabriel and submitted to God's will that she should bear the Christ child. All this is in God's amazing plan. And one of the things you discover if you really read the Bible and seek to understand it through uh, sharing it and discussing it with others, is that God has a plan that began before time and will be ultimately fulfilled at the end of time when Jesus returns and all things will be made new. We listen to a lovely contemporary poem. It's called The Pulse of Time. And you and I live today within the pulse of time.
seek to touch heaven in renewing our commitment to you through this amazing event that took place so many years ago. We commit this service to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
just like the people James Bond can survive in environments and circumstances that we, in our own strength, can never withstand. For example, the light of the world. Our world is broken and broken hearts yearning. Jesus came as love and hope incarnate. And still he comes in us who worship and serve him. Oh, that we would embrace the opportunity that Christmas offers to share Jesus, Father's gift, light in the darkness. I hope you have a wonderful Bubbly over with head in your shoulders, and as those you are privileged to share life, I'll give you a gift by the hope that we will give you too. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power.
you if you don't know what they do, and they were surprised and blessed. And then we took a great big jar of lollipops, and we walked around on the wheel as we do every week with the children. And of course, children, lollipops, they see you, they want one. But see, they have to answer the question first. What is Christmas all about? Well, we've got some fascinating answers. But I want to tell you that actually, for me, I don't know it's very encouraging. We've got some answers about it's about family, it's about love, and it's about you know, giving presents. Uh, things like that, and uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that is all about that in part, yeah. But we got more answers concerning the fact that that's it, they said it's something to do with Jesus, and as soon as they said it's something to do with Jesus, uh, we asked them the question, well, who was Jesus? That was a bit of a challenge to them, but many of them said, oh, Jesus, wasn't he born to hmm, Mary, I think it was, one of them said, yes, he said that's actually right, but who was his father? And when the child in the group said, well, it wasn't Joseph, it wasn't because he was special. <laughs> so I said, well, who was his father then? Well, it was God. You know, and we had this conversation similar to that, repeated a dozen or more times around the field. We got through somewhere like 150 lollipops. All the children were being asked the question, what's Christmas about? Try and put into their hearts and minds that it's not just about family and friends and giving presents. That it's more than bar humbug. I want to say to you this evening, in this short period, that I'd like to share something with you. That you again, and I again, have made a decision about what we believe we're saying today. In his famous book, uh, C.S. Lewis makes this statement. C.S. Lewis, a great man, a great theologian, a great thinker, a professor at Cambridge University, he said this. A man who was merely a man and said of the things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level of a man who says he's a poached egg, or he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this was and is the Son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. You could shut him up for a fool, or you could fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about him being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. Jesus could only have been one of four things. A legend, a liar, a lunatic, or Lord God. There is so much historical and archaeological evidence to support his existence that every reputable historian agrees he was not a legend. If Jesus were alive, why would he die for his claims when he leaves him as a widow, such a cruel death, with a few choice words? And if he were a lunatic, how did he engage in intelligent debates with his opponents? Or handle the stress of his betrayal and his crucifixion while continuing to show a deep love for <coughs> his antagonists. Christ said he was Lord and God. The evidence supports that claim. And this is the choice that faces you and me again this week. The choice of saying, literally, let me give it simply to you because I understand simple things because I'm a simple minded person. I can walk out of here and say, Bar humbug, and deny all that God has done in my life since I became a Christian in 1974. All the answers of prayer that I've seen could possibly be coincidences. All the different things that have happened where God has revealed himself. I can go out of here and say, Bar humbug, I don't want to believe it any longer. But then, as soon as I get out of the door, I meet a world which is falling apart. I mean, the world where people are in pain, whether they are in confusion. I go to people's bedsides who die, who die in terror of what lies beyond. I meet with people who say, what is all about? And we can't answer all the questions that there are in this world. It is true. But we have a choice to say that somewhere amidst it all, and somewhere amidst the Christmas message, is the truth that God's love was so great 
that he chose to reveal it by coming and choosing to live amongst us. And as we said in our service this morning, he came into a world that was cold. He came into a world that was vulnerable. He came into a world not in the luxury of a palace, but into a stable. He came because he chose to be amongst us. And you and I may face the challenges that we face in life. You and I might be coming near to the end of our lives. You and I do not know what this new year and a few, uh, few days' time will bring. But of this we can choose. We can choose to say, as much as we do not understand so much, we do know that at the centre of it all is the power of a God who loves, who revealed himself through a baby, who became a man, who died on the cross, and who rose again triumphant and lives forevermore. And he is the one that holds the world together. Without it, we would not be here. We can choose to believe that. A Jewish person writing in a magazine that I received just this week said this. A Jewish person. If Jesus is not the Messiah, then believing in him is the most dangerous thing a person can do. But if he is the Messiah, then failing to believe is not just dangerous, it is eternally tragic beyond anything we can comprehend. What's the choice that you and I will make for this Christmas? Where is your eternal destiny? If the reality proven by historians is that Jesus came, that it was documented, secular and in scripture, that he died and amazingly rose from the dead again. What does this say to us about who he was? And what is our response to him? Does it not say to us, dear friends, that the only hope for this world is knowing that God is working his purposes out? That where we are at the minute is not the end of the story. That God wants to give every opportunity for every man, woman, child, teenager. To come to that moment that we read about, that was read to us in John chapter 4, to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God, to become part of his family. It is not automatic. Because I'm born in a Christian country does not make me a Christian. The same that if I was born in a garage, I wouldn't be a car. Oops. We need to wake up to the truth that this world is wearing out like no garment. My words? No. The words of Isaiah thousands of years ago. The world will wear out. But there's another promise which is equally great. That Jesus will return and that all things will be made new. Listen to these words. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne, saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death, or sorrow, or crying, or pain. All these things will be gone forever. We're not there yet, friends. You know, you know that, and I know that. Just by looking at your newspapers and your televisions and listening to Radio 4, be it John Huffman or anybody else, you know that we live in a world which needs desperate help. The greatest secret shouldn't be a secret. 
and I say this seriously to you, is that within the context of what we believe as Christians, we hold the answer that we live in a world that is still yet waiting for something to change within it. And yet a world that has had the most a miraculous sign <coughs> that it would ever be. A baby in a manger who grew up to be a man who spoke as no other man speaks, who did things as no other man did things, who performed miracles that no one had ever seen before. <clears throat> Who out of the, the avenues of the rooms of whatever the expression is right of heaven comes to live as God here on earth and says to you and to me today, to all who will accept me and believe, I give the right become a child of God. That transforming moment when your life is no longer yours, but his life to be lived to him. The world waits. People wait. Your friends and your neighbours who perhaps do not understand who Jesus is, wait. All around the world, people are looking and wanting and waiting. And I say to you as I close, mine is the choice, and yours is the choice. To believe in Jesus, the Messiah, is dangerous because it changes our lives. And yet it's tragic if we miss it and forget the reason. God sent Jesus into the world that we may become a part of his family. I encourage you this Christmas time. Yes, enjoy with everything that is within you the Christmas season. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the family. Enjoy the presents. But above all, know that just as Jesus came for a reason, you also are here for a reason. That first reason is to know him, to accept him, to believe in him, and to live for him. Because in that, our world begins to become a better place. Soon and very soon, we will see the king. Believe me. And because the scripture has come true, this will also be true.
pray, Lord, for all those in our world who are suffering, for whom this time of peace and joy and fellowship and fun is not like that for them, but a time of suffering and sadness and wondering where the next meal will come from. We pray for all those who are in war-torn countries. We pray for soldiers who are away from home, serving their countries, wondering when they might return to see their loved ones. Lord, all the various and difficult situations in our world are known to you, and yet you reach out with the same message of 2,000 years ago, Emmanuel. God is with us. The sign of your love has come. And so we pray, dear Father, that wherever we may be over this Christmas period, that we would be the people who speak positively of your love in Jesus, who share that love in actions and in words. And though there may be moments of quiet and moments of reflection, as perhaps we think of years gone by, wonder what the years in the future may hold. We thank you that we can know you hold the world because you sent Jesus to be the Savior and Redeemer of us. We pray that you would have each one of us today to engage with you at the deepest level, to know our lives are of meaning and work and of security because you reach out and invite us into a relationship of love with your Son. Father, by the power of your Spirit, may we leave this service and enter into the days of this week, knowing that there is a Savior who is for all mankind, that we might accept.
Wonders of his love. 